All right, what's up, guys? Welcome back to Sunny Side of Vaping. Um, my mother-in-law needs a coil rebuilt, so I'm gonna rebuild her coil, and I thought it'd be a perfect time to guys to kind of show you guys my basic micro coil build that I kind of stick to. Nice, simple, and easy. Um, I know I got a lot of friends that are out of state that kind of asked me how to build and kind of like that, so maybe this video will help them seeing it actually. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna build a basic micro coil using 26 gauge and 2.5 millimeter screwdrivers. Always, always, always make sure you have an ohm reader when building and make sure you're building safe and not exceeding your amp limits. Always, always remember that. This one's gonna ohm out to roughly a 0 0.4, 0 0.5 or something like that. Um, if you guys don't already, download an app if you're on Android I think iPhone might have it also it's called vapors toolbox any kind of app that's vape related will be able to show you how many wraps and everything to get the desired ohms you are trying to get so without further ado we're gonna go down close and hopefully get this video done without too many hiccups bear with me through this one it's my first one on camera it's a little tricky building on camera so we'll see you down there all right so here we are what you're gonna need to build you're gonna need some wire we're gonna use 26 gauge today um, obviously you're gonna need your Addy we're gonna be building on a tow Addy uh, we're gonna use you need something to cut the wire with right now I have nail clippers I usually use some little pliers but I don't have them with me and then I use two 2.5 millimeter screwdrivers let's see if we can get that so I use two of those Need something to build on, which we're just going to use this Maraxxis clone. Some pliers, and then an ohm reader. I don't have a standalone ohm reader, so I'm going to use my DNA 30. Must, must have an ohm reader. Alright, so let's get started and see if we could do this on camera. So, and what I'm going to start off doing, I'm going to pull some wire, cut two things of wire. Do, do, do. Basically, just cut some wire. Bam. Right? Take your wire, kind of fold it in half, and then bam. So now you have two things of wire. So now we take our wire. And we take one of our screwdrivers. I'll try getting this as close as possible for you guys. And we basically put it like this. Hold it right there. Alright, so you have it like that. You're holding it right there. And you have this top part. And then you basically just start wrapping. So you do one. Holding the other lead. Two. Three. Four, five, six, seven should probably get us where we want to be. So you're left with something like that. You're left with something that looks like that. And then what you want to do, you want to kind of just squinch it together. So just go like this. And then what I do is I pull these leads. So you hold hold your coil, grab something and pull on these leads a little bit. So that it evens out. And basically you are left with a coil that looks like that. Right? So we're going to do it again, and I'm going to show you guys again, just in case you guys missed that. Again, wire, like that, hold down here with your thumb and your finger, and then start wrapping. One, as close together as possible, two, three, four, five, six, Seven. It's a little hard to do on camera, but you want it as close as possible as you can. Strain out your leads. Oops, 
smush it up and we'll fix the imperfections once it's on the actual coal. What's it oh, what's it on there? We'll fix those imperfections. Alright, so now you have two identical setups. Now you have two identical setups on these two wires, on these two screwdrivers. So what we're gonna do is obviously we don't need that much of a lead right there. So we don't need that much of a lead. So we will just trim off that. This side, same thing, don't need that much of a lead. You do wanna have one lead longer than the other because one's gonna go into your positive, one's gonna go into your negative. All right, so then you have your Addy is on a mod. Definitely do not recommend having a battery in your mod and if you do, make sure you have it locked down here. That way you're building a lot safer no battery, no chance of it firing while you're building. Definitely want to do that. Um, so you have your mod, like so. You take your coil, and what I do, the one that's looping over is the one I put on my center post. The one under is the one I put on my negative post. So basically take it, I don't know if you're going to be able to get this or not, but I'll try it. Take it, put it through the center post, Put it through negative post. Just kind of squirm its way in there. This is a tope, so it has those little tabs. And basically, you're left with something like right there. Right? And then what I do, the reason I use these screwdrivers is because I like to center my coils a little bit. So if you kind of get it close and you kind of push, you'll make an indention. In your, you make an indention in there. I don't know if you can see that or not. But basically, you're making an indention. Let me get real close and show you. Basically, you're making an indention in this lead right here to indent it. You see? Uh, let's see here, right there. Basically, you are making this indention right there. That's what we're looking for in that indention. When, when making that indention and it's a lot more useful when you don't have these tabs but even on the toe I still do it so then you make that little indention and then you hold your finger right there and then basically tying down the negative post once that's tight you can go back and see where you're at if you need to make it a little more indention to center it more you can I then lift up this post or lead, lift up this lead, leave that screwdriver in there, take your other screwdriver, and then do the same thing on the opposite side. You're going to have to fight with the other one for a little while to get it over. If you can't get it over, you can take your screwdriver out real quick, put it through, put it through, come on. There we go. But before you make any adjustments over here on this side, tightening anything down, put your screwdriver on the other side back in. Helps keep your coil in place the way it's supposed to be. So then you do like this. Now the key to the key to coils is you want you want the distance from center post to this coil and center post to this coil equal as equal as you can get them so we're going to try doing that as equal as we can get them so if you go like this look at it and then you push in again for the indention and then you kind of see where you're at and then hold both of them hold the other one tying down like so. So now you have both of them tying, you have both negative posts tying down. And then you could kind of gauge your distance on here and then tighten down your positive post. 
See how it turns like that? See how your screwdrivers turn like that? If you didn't have your screwdrivers in there, you would, that whole coil would turn on you. The center post on this one is turning on me, but that should work for what we need. So basically, when you take this out and this out, you're left with a tangled mess like so. So now, clean it up. Clean it up, pretty simple. Pull this lead back down, get your clippers or whatever, and as close as you can to that post. That side's done. Same thing on this side, lift it up a little bit, as close as you can to that post. Clip it. The center ones, you can either clip them as close as you can, or if you just keep going like this, they will eventually fall off. that get this one same thing if you see that coil moving like that put your thing back in there your screwdriver back in there and then do it there we go everything looks pretty good now Looks pretty good. We will clean it all up once we start firing it and stuff. But there you go. Uh, make sure everything's tight here. Negative post is tight. Negative post is tight. I'm not going to turn the center post that much because it's already turning on me. But we'll turn it down just a hair. And then we're going to fix our leads here because I see some issues here. Just make that one come out a little more. And then this one kind of come out a little more. There we go. So now we're going to put it on our ohm meter, which I will use my DNA mod. So let me do that real quick. All right, so we have it on something that's going to read the ohms. 0.4 ohms is what we're coming out to right now. But now we want to pulse it and then squeeze it. Pulse and squeeze. So let's so basically just pulse. And as it starts heating up, just gently squeeze. Squeeze, squeeze, This one's heating up first, so let go and then squeeze. Do not press the fire button while you squeeze. Make sure you let go of the fire button. Now this one's heating up first. Basically, you just keep doing this until you get them to heat up evenly. And at the same time. That's pretty close, so we'll just give this one one last quick little squeeze. That's pretty close. Basically, that's all you want to see right there. And we are still at a point four. The reason I always say to keep an ohm reader because ohm readers don't only tell you your 
ohms, but it could also tell you if you have a short in your build. So always, always build with ohm read, use an ohm reader no matter how long you've been building. Always, always check your ohms with an ohm reader. There you go. So now we're going to wick it. We're going to let it cool off real quick and then we'll wick it and then we will finish off the build. Give me one second. All right, so for wicking, get yourself a piece of organic cotton, um, Japanese cotton if you want, if you prefer that. If you're using organic cotton, just kind of pull on it until you find where it comes off, which is going to be like right here. And then unwind some. Oh, get yourself some scissors and cut off a piece. And then you have a little flat piece like that. Basically knowing the size of your coil, you're going to kind of want to cut it in half to be that size of your coil, the diameter of your coil. For, for wicking purposes, I put this on just the top of the Meraxis. Basically then you just kind of, you compact it without really compacting it. Basically you just want to kind of twirl it in your hands to where it all becomes one piece and like one unified one unified width all the way through something like that and then you squeeze the end and twirl the end so that this piece goes through your coil and basically just put it through the coil and then um, let's see how should we do this we'll do it this side put it through the coil and basically as you pull you want to kind of twist this side as you pull this side you want to twist this side kind of helps it go get through there and just go in there until you find it to where it's snug but not super snug and back and forth and then you know you want to be able to move it kind of freely basically like that that's basically what you're looking for right there so now we'll go down and do the other side Now you have two of them. Basically take your scissors and kind of just trim. You know, I usually go like with my mod, wherever my mod's at is where I'll trim. Switch the other side and trim. You're left with something like that. Now what do you do? Well now you gotta, you know, you kind of you kind of gauge gauge how much of this is actually going to get folded into here to see where to maybe maybe you got to cut a little more um, so like on this one I feel like I got to probably cut off just a little bit more it might seem kind of weird that you're just cutting off that much but in the end it's going to pay off because you're going to have a better vape the better wick you have the better vape wicking is probably one of the most important parts in vaping so then what do we do? So then we're gonna come back. A lot of people do this differently. This is the way I do it. I'm gonna get the juice that she wants to use, which is Lost Arts Cottontail Cream. I'm gonna shake it up. And then basically I'm gonna start wetting this cotton the way it is right here. So basically just get there, pour it on there. Get it all wet. Get it nice and saturated. And then, so once you have it nice and saturated, I get a, on this case, a 1.6 millimeter screwdriver. Basically take it underneath here, 
fold it over and then kind of lift up and tuck it down. Now we're not tucking underneath the coil, we're just tucking it down into the into the deck. So same thing here, you kind of make you know lift it up here, kind of get it to kind of fold over itself. And bam. And then we're going to do the same thing over here. And lift up, fold over ourselves, pack it in, and bam. Same thing. All four sides, same thing. And then I get my fingers and I kind of just kind of just fluff it up right there. So once you have that, you want to get your juice again, and now you want to really 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 soak it. You really want to make sure every piece of that cotton is wet. So once you soak it up like that to where it's all nice and wet, you are going to want to, just like when you got a starter kit guys, let it sit for a little bit. So we're just going to let it sit for 20 seconds or something just so that you know it really starts absorbing. Alright, so now that it's kind of soaked in. Um, I would usually put it on an ohm reader again, especially using it on a mech mod. So I'm putting it back on here so we can verify that the ohms are good. There's no short or nothing. Let's make sure we got wattage that's going to run it up there. And then basically just fire it a couple of times and see how it fires. Get that cotton and start breaking itself in. I got juice all over me over here. Get that kind of start breaking in. Once it start, once it breaks in, it'll fire off real good. So you just want to, you know, hit it a couple times like so. And get it going. Once you do that, we're gonna juice it up one last time. Since we fired some of the juice, juice it up one last time. And we're going to put it on her mod and back out and vape it real quick and see how it vapes. So we'll see you guys right back out there. So there we go guys, basic 26 gauge micro coil build. Um, it's basically kind of the build that I do for new people getting into it. Um, I usually go to like a 0.5 or 0.6, but that's usually what I use for new people. Um, as a new person, going from a vape pen or something like that, a 0 0.5, 0 0.6, even 0.7 will be enough vapor for them to get accustomed to the dripping and all that. So let's see how she vapes real quick. This is on one of her mods here, so... That, that, that's enough vapor for any new person getting into vape, getting into dripping. There's no way that is not enough. No reason why a new person should have to start at 0.2 or even lower to get a good vape. 0.5 and up should be the standard for any new dripper coming in. Build yourself a 0 0.5, 0 0.6. So basically add a couple of wraps to the video you just saw and you'll get a higher ohm. Not bad, not bad at all. There you guys go. My first build on video. Hopefully it wasn't too much of a disaster. If you guys want to see any more, let me know. But that's usually my basic builds that I stick to. So until next time, vape safe, be safe, and we'll see you next time. Thank you for watching.